washes our conscience clean. Mm -hmm. We see the conclusions of the carnal mind, and we see that they were always lies. And then we see what was in the mind of Christ. We see that manifest in the resurrection. So we don't have to wonder what was in his heart when he hung on the cross. We see what was in his heart as he hung on the cross about God and about himself and about their life together. We see it manifest in the resurrection. Now we see it. Now our minds are renewed from all the conclusions of the carnal mind to the conclusions of the mind of Christ. We start walking through the earth and not defining our life by the life that's in the world. Yes. We stop defining our life by our jobs. By how's it going with our spouses? By how's it going with our kids? By how's it going with our country? By how's it going with our economy? We don't define our lives that way. We stop defining our lives by the good fruit we can bring forth or the bad fruit we can keep from coming forth. We stop knowing ourselves that way. Our minds are washed clean from thinking about ourselves that way. Guess what? We stop judging the people around us that way. We stop looking at them based on what they do, what they have. We stop judging them based on whether we think they're bringing forth the right fruit or the wrong fruit. We start seeing them the way God sees them. Listen, that causes you to grow in favor with God and with man. Mm -hmm. It does something in the heart of a human being when they feel love coming out of you towards them and they think they're unlovable. You know what happens? They begin to love you. You know what happens when you say you're sorry to someone, well, even when you hadn't done them wrong, but you can see they're highly offended by you? Do you know what happens? Their offense is destroyed. It breaks down the foundation for their offense because they can see your intent in the, your, the intent in your heart was never to cause them harm. It was never to do anything that could hurt them, but it was only ever to be good to them. And you're not sorry as if I did wrong. You're sorry as I'm sorry your heart was hurt. I can be sorry that anybody's heart's hurt, whether I think I hurt it or not. Why? Because I love them. Mm -hmm. Because I'm seeing things through the mind of God. I don't see what mind's God, God's mind is, and I say, let me do that. But I see God's mind, and God's thoughts have washed away my thoughts. And now his thoughts have become my thoughts. And now his feelings have become my feelings. And that has given birth to the fruit of God's life in me. Sure. Right? right? Yeah. And, and we so often think, well, how does that help me in this life? <laughs> because we've gotten so programmed in church to want to hear the ten steps yeah. to a good life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, man, God didn't need the ten steps to a good life when he walked the earth. All he needed to do was think from the mind of the spirit. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. So the spiritual mind thinks in such a way that will cause you to have great success. And we're not going to define success carnally. You see what I'm saying? That doesn't mean you can't see some good things happen. Mm -hmm. Listen, through the power of the Spirit dwelling in a person, they could grow in so much favor with God's life. That's what it means to grow in favor with God. It doesn't mean God wasn't happy with you and now you grow in his happiness towards you. It doesn't mean God wasn't blessing you and now you're getting more of his blessing. It means that God has a certain life. And as you grow in the wisdom of God, you grow in the stature of your sonship. You grow in what it means to be a son in the house of God and that the heir in the house is the spirit. You grow in that, and so you grow in connection with the life of God. As you grow in connection with the life of God, guess what happens as you encounter other human beings? They feel the love of God coming out of you towards them. And they feel endearment towards you. They begin to love your life. They begin to care for you. They begin to see you loving their life so much, caring for their life so much, only speaking well of them, only trying to be good to them, that even when they do you harm, you blow it off and you only care about how they're doing. Listen, that does something in them. They love you. Now those guys will do anything to help your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You see how that works? And so that can result in having some good things happen in, in the earth. Um, what looks like. But we don't define ourselves by that. We don't define ourselves by the fruit that could come forth from the life of God. Right? If Jesus had defined himself that way, he wouldn't have hung on the cross and said, Abba, 
into your hands I commit my life. If he had defined himself by the sin and death he had, he would have done like the first Adam. He would have gotten busy clothing himself. If he would have looked at the sin and death he had and said, I'm not the son. The Father is not for me. The Father is against me because of this fruit that I'm in. He would have gotten busy trying to deal with it. He probably would have started cussing the centurions, <coughs> cussing the one thief on the other side of him that was like, if you are the son. He would have jumped into self-justification. You don't think I'm the son. Watch. 